and then at 8 a.m. IST, the history was made. I could not believe I had become part of such a historic moment. The first mass mission in the world to succeed in its first attempt. And above all, it was the youngest team in Israel that worked for this mission. Today, I'll be sharing with you the story of Indian space program that goes right back to 1960s under the vision of great physicist Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. His vision of using space technology to the real problem of man and society. But then it was not an easy task for him to convince the government of the day about the relevance of the space program for a developing nation. Eventually, with all his possible efforts, he succeeded in obtaining funds. And that was when the Indian space journey began. This was how those initial days looked like. A very humble beginning with extremely limited resources. In 1975, the first Indian satellite Aryabhatta was launched. Later on, we continued our efforts to build much more advanced rockets and satellites culminating into our first moon mission, Chandrayaan-1, which detected water on the lunar surface. After this big achievement, our next step had to be our neighbor planet Mars. But why Mars? There are many unanswered questions about Mars. Is there life on Mars? Is there water on Mars? And can it tell us something about Earth's past or Earth's future? The next reason, improving the quality of life on Earth itself. A computer algorithm which was developed for one of the space programs, when applied to X-ray images, it did a better job at detecting the early stages of breast cancer than the conventional one. So this cross-pollination of fields, innovating in one and bringing the revolutionary changes in another, it happens all the time and it undoubtedly improves the quality of life. The main reason to inspire the next generation of space explorers who can contribute to the future growth of a nation. And that's why this rose next step towards this goal was mission to Mars. One of the toughest challenges for Mars Orbiter mission was completing this project in just 18 months with no previous heritage in interplanetary mission. In such missions, a signal takes to and fro time of 40 minutes. It is like if someone wants to switch on a bulb using a remote control from here. It will take 20 minutes for the signal to reach the bulb to come on and then 20 more minutes to confirm whether the bulb has come on or not. Such a huge time delay. What it meant? It meant we had to build the systems capable of doing self-diagnostics, self-recovery, and executing all the loaded instructions with highest precision. Because any minutest error in executing those instructions would jeopardize the mission. And this is what had happened to many earlier missions of NASA, Russia, Japan, and China. Out of 51 missions so far, only 21 have succeeded. Success rate? less than 50%. And remember, no one could achieve it at the first time. So we started working on it. While the hardware that was used was adapted from many previously successful missions, the autonomy software was almost a new venture for us. The next major challenge for MOM was to design a precise path that would take the spacecraft from Earth towards Mars, but with minimum fuel. Another obstacle we had to overcome, it was the time of launch. That comes only once in 26 months. This is because there is a particular geometry formed between Earth and Mars, which provides you an opportunity to launch with minimum fuel. So imagine if you would not have launched MOM in 2013, I would not be standing here and telling you about MOM today. 
Then another way we found to further minimize the fuel requirement. That was the last stage of the rocket when it took off. It should inject the spacecraft not over India but over Pacifics near Australia. But then we did not have any ground stations or antennas to track the vehicle on the sea. We decided to deploy two ships which would take two months of time to reach. But then what happened? There was a huge storm over the sea. The ships could not reach in time. They got delayed by 10 days. We were racing against time. Before the time was up, on 5th of November 2013, our mighty PSLV successfully took off and put the spacecraft into its first parking orbit. The most unique part of MOM was its trajectory. You can see having the multiple slingshots. And with each sling, with each burn operation, the distance from the Earth is increasing. 25 days later, when came the final maneuver, the spacecraft had to leave the Earth's gravity and start moving towards Mars. This is called cruising. The direction of cruise is very important. It demands an exact and accurate performance of 99.9%. .9%. Actually, many missions failed in this phase. ISRO made history on 30th November 2013 itself when mom successfully left for the cruise in its first attempt. <laughs> to show how challenging it was to achieve the correct cruise path, it would be similar like going outside right now and hit a golf ball towards a hole located in Los Angeles. The ball has to go straight into the hole and wait to make it even more challenging the hole was moving. <laughs> After six, traveling 650 millions of kilometers in 10 months of time, mom made its closest approach to Mars. It was just 500 kilometers away. But then, reaching near to Mars doesn't mean we have achieved the mission. It should start rotating around the Mars. For that, it needed a thrust, a push into the gravity well of Mars. This is called mass orbit insertion. It is the most critical one-time operation. If you miss it, you lose it. There is no second chance. And being the deputy operations director, I with my team was responsible to ensure that this operation takes place as per the set configuration. Because again, any minutest error would jeopardize the entire mission. The D-Day arrived, 24th of September, 2014. At 7 a.m. IST, early in the morning, we received the first signal indicating the correct start of the auto sequence by the onboard computers. 21 minutes later, the main engine started firing. That was the time when half of the success was ensured. Four minutes later, the signal stopped. What happened? The satellite went behind the Mars from where no signal could reach Earth. It was as if time has stopped. Our eyes were glued to the computer screen waiting for the data to come back. For those 26 minutes, there was complete and utter silence. And then at 8 a.m. IST, the history was made. The hall was filled with loud cheers and claps. I could not believe I had become part of such a historic moment. Mom successfully entered Martian orbit with many firsts in its account. The first Mars mission in the world to succeed in its first attempt. The most economical project, interplanetary project in the world. The project got realized in the shortest time of 18 months. 
the satellite having full scale on board autonomy and above all it was the youngest team in isro that worked for this mission today mom is sending huge amount of data it has opened up a new regime for a space physicist to analyze the data and reveal some of the mysteries of mars that's going on I feel the major contribution of mom can be seen in this letter by a young boy to the chairman of ISRO expressing how proud he feels for India and he desires to join ISRO the same desire which I had 17 years ago while this mission has a stirred inspiration into the veins of every indian student it has created an awe towards science and technology in the whole country the bigger mission achieved was to empower 1.25 billion people and make them realize the inherent strength and power of indians to reach a far planet and showing to the world we are second to none thank you